Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome to another Houdini tutorial. So I haven't been around much and it's because about two weeks ago I got COVID and my throat is still a little sore. I still uh, cough sometimes. So I'm trying to keep this video uh, short and to the point. Uh, but before we start, uh, this is my Behance profile. Uh, you can check out uh, my stuff there. Uh, I usually post here before posting on Instagram or Twitter. So you can uh, be one of the first people to view my project. <laughs> So if you're interested, just give me a follow. Uh, and yeah, for example, this is my uh, latest project, Awaken. I am thinking about turning this into an NFT, but I still haven't decided yet. All right, uh, in this video, we are going to be talking about Heart of Ice. Well, uh, we're not going to be covering uh, this project entirely. Uh, we are going to be covering the uh, icicle effect. Uh, let's take a look at the video. Uh, we have this ballerina dancing, we have a uh, snow simulation, we have some uh, simulation on the ground, uh, which gave us this uh, snowy effect. Uh, we have some uh, modeling here, everything is done in Houdini. And yeah, uh, this is our icicles. Uh, we are going to be covering uh, how to generate these icicles. I'm going to be using a sphere instead of this model, which by the way, uh, the model is by... Uh, all marks it's available on sketchfab uh, you can just download it uh, from there or you can just follow along with the sphere uh, I prefer doing it on a sphere because it's uh, simpler here and uh, after that I'm just going to show you uh, my own project we're going to uh, I'm going to do a simple breakdown on other stuff but yeah our main focus is going to be on the icicle effect uh, it, these are just some other shots from this project I particularly uh, like this one and yeah uh, let's jump into Houdini all right so we're in Houdini uh, I'm just gonna put down a sphere and jump inside uh, I turn this into a polygon uh, let's bring the frequency up to like uh, 150 yeah a lot of frequency I'm just gonna put down an attribute warp dive inside uh, P2P, displace along normal, and let's just put down a AA noise, connect it to a mount, yeah, this is good. I'm going to copy this uh, anti-alias noise and just connect the noise output to this position, uh, change this into a 3D noise, alright, good. Now. I'm going to bring the roughness down. Yeah, this is an interesting shape. I like it. Uh, let's play. You know what? Uh, let's actually, before doing that, uh, I'm going to put down a mountain in here. Yeah, this is better. I'm going to bring the roughness down. Uh, I want my shape to be a little more interesting. So something like this. And then I'm going to apply, oh, oh yeah, this is very interesting. So by the way, you can just use any model that you want. Uh, we're going to be covering how to do a uh, frozen effect. It doesn't matter what the uh, geometry is. Uh, you can do something else in here as well. If you want, you can put down uh, another anti-alias noise and just connect this to your scale and now on some parts of your geometry you're gonna get uh, this now let me connect it to CD and we can see where we're gonna get our uh, displacement so just connect it back uh, if you bring the amplitude up you can see uh, how you're manipulating your geometry I I'm gonna put down a fit range in here anti-alias noise uh, gives us a value between minus 0.5 and 0.5 so you can just put that in here and yeah uh, this is an interesting shape uh, we're getting some displacement some parts are going to stay clean you can just play with the uh, frequency something like that uh, I, I am not going to be doing that in this project because I actually really like this effect Let's let's play with it a little bit. Maybe 
Yeah, okay. Offsetting this thing as well. And maybe actually going back here on our mountain node and offsetting our shape. Yeah, these are all very interesting. I like them. Not this one in particular, but... Okay, yeah. I like this one. Alright. We're gonna put down a null. By the way, you can colorize your nodes uh, by just uh, permanently colorize them by uh, holding down Control and clicking on these colors while you're selecting them. And from now on, every time you put down a null, it's, uh, it's going to be in this color. I like keeping them red. And I'm just going to say in geo. So I know that uh, this is my uh, initial geometry. I'm getting some intersections in here I don't like them so let's let's do this let's put down a VDB from polygons bring the voxel size down and let's convert back to polygons and it's fine now uh, in between you can put down smooth SDF and yeah this is better uh, we are losing some uh, some of our details in here. Maybe play with this value. 0 0.005. Okay, yeah, something like this. Uh you can also just uh let's let's not do that actually. Let's bring it back to 0 0.01. Uh you can go back here, play with your values, maybe another shape, for example. Something like this seems actually much better. It's not intersecting that much. We do have some intersections in here. You can just play with your values and find something that uh, isn't giving you any artifacts, any intersections. Maybe something like this. Okay, yeah, th this looks better. Let me look inside, make sure I'm not having any intersections. I mean, some small intersections in here, but I, I don't think it matters. All right, so actually we didn't need the VDB. But uh, the VDB workflow is actually uh, the standard workflow whenever uh, you have like intersections or something like that, you can do that. And uh, I mean, uh, you can actually keep it and uh, put down another mountain load, mountain node, for example, after it. For example, this is our shape, and then we just put down another mountain, bring the height down, play with these values and you can add uh, details on top of it. it, it it's, it's pretty awesome. I, I like it. And how many points do we have here? About 200,000. Yeah, we're, we're uh, on a good number. All right. And yeah, uh, as you can see, we're adding details. It doesn't really matter. I'm just going to put this on the side. Connect it directly. It's fine. Uh, no need to worry about it so uh we're gonna do the uh frozen effect with a pyro <laughs> note let's put down pyro source i'm gonna come here say surface scatter in the particles uh, particle separation i'm gonna go with 0 0.025 maybe 0 0.02 okay yeah this is a good value i'm gonna click uh, Plus, I'm going to say temperature and I'm going to set it to zero. All right. Let's come back here. I'm going to scatter, mm, let's say three points, maybe four points. Yeah. I'm going to put down a sphere, make the sphere smaller, select both of them, put down a copy to points. Okay, yeah, this is uh, good. I'm going to come uh, to my pyro source and put down a group node. Connect this uh, to the bounding object. Come here, uncheck this, go to bounding regions and uh, go with the bounding object. And we need to change this into points. All right, so I'm going to call this start group. And uh, we're going to put down an attribute wrangle. Uh, don't worry, it's not complicated code. Uh, I'm just going to type f at temperature equals to 1. That's it. And right now, if I visualize my temperature, uh, we're going to be having this. So let's put down a pyro spread. Uh, 
very simple. Uh, let's bring the cooling rate back down to like um, 0.4 maybe. Yeah, this looks good. Uh, you can actually bring the rate down or up to affect the speed. Uh, if you bring it too much uh, on the low side, uh, it's going to be too slow, but I kind of like it in here. I think I think this is good. Uh, let's take a look at our diffusion. Maybe bring the element size down a little bit. Let's see. Let's look at other uh, noises. This one looks interesting, but it doesn't really look like ice. Oh no. Uh, Manhattan Whirly. Yeah, this is this is interesting. I like it. And let me bring the element size down. Maybe make the cool parts a little bigger. Okay, let's take a look at our temperature now. It's going. I like the shape. We're having these parts in the middle that are not being affected. I like that. And yeah, overall, this is a very good, very good uh, shape effect. All right, so we're going to put down a group expression. I'm just going to call this infected group. Change it to points. Uh, the pyrosource. Uh, pyrosource spread uh, gives us uh, a lot of attributes. I'm going to be using the burn attribute. I'm going to say wherever burn is not equal to zero, select that point. All right, cool. And I'm just going to put down a blast. And blast uh, infected group. Uh, and I'm just going to check delete non selected. So we're getting this shape. All right, very interesting. Uh, now, we are going to be uh, basically uh, generating two branches in here. So on one branch, we're going to be generating our ice effect, uh, basically this thing. Uh, let me show you the ice on the geometry. And on the other branch, we're going to be generating the actual icicles. So I'm just going to come here. Uh, on the left side, we're going to be doing the uh, IC effect. Uh, I'm just going to type VDB, uh, VDB particles. And uh, we need to bring the search radius down. Uh, point radio, voxel size, let's set it to 0 0.01 for the time being. and Point radius 0 0.02, for example, too, too low. Uh, 0 0.05, still too low. 0 0.1. We're getting something, but it's actually not that good. So let, let's make it bigger so we can see it. All right, yeah, something like that. And I'm just going to put down a reshape. All right, yeah, this is good. Okay, yeah, this is uh, good enough for what we're going to be doing here. Uh, very interesting shape, and it, uh, as you can see, it's pretty fast. Uh, we can uh, manipulate your pyro source, add more points, and uh, you can get a better resolution here. All right, uh, let's generate our icicle. So we're going to put down a pop net. Uh, we are going to come up here. We have this ingeo. I'm just going to copy that. Dive inside. Down a static object, merge them together. You can put down a static solver in here. It doesn't do much, but uh, it's better. Uh, I'm gonna point to my ingeo. All right. Uh, I'm gonna check this guide. I'm gonna uh, come here and say points because uh, I don't wanna have it on all my points. Uh, if I set it to all points, it's just gonna uh, put everything on top of each other. It's, it's, it's not nice. I'm gonna say points and I'm gonna come to my birth tab and I'm gonna say like 
five. So we are going to be getting these values. Now, my uh, static object is actually not that good right now, as you can see. We're uh, scattering them on the surface, so I'm just going to come out here. Let's take a look. Why is there a distance? Oh yeah, it's a, a p-scale attribute. Uh, I forgot we had a uh, p-scale attribute, so I'm just going to put on attribute delete. And I'm going to... Actually, uh, let's just delete all the attributes. We don't really need that. need anything. Uh, Alright, go. So we're generating our points. Basically, these points are going to be our starting points for the icicle effect. I'm just going to dive inside. I'm going to put down a pop angle in here. I'm going to say v at v point y uh, is equal to a random number based on the at sign pt num. So what's going to happen here? Uh, let me just jump right here. I'm going to visualize my V attribute. All right. So I'm generating a random value for my uh, velocity. Now it's pointing up and we don't want that. So let's multiply it by one mi minus one. So they're going to be falling down. All right. Good. I'm also going to add a uh, gravity node in here, gravity force. So everything is going to be pointing down. All right, good. Uh, actually, uh, let's just come here, say v at v equals to zero. And now, all right, yeah, it, it looks correct now because uh, it, it wasn't uh, functioning the way I wanted. Uh, yeah, and I'm just going to come here, say fit01, because uh, this uh, random number is putting out an, uh, the, the uh, output of this function is between uh, 0 and 1, and I'm just going to uh, fit this value between 0 0.1, as I don't want them to have a, a velocity of 0, and let's say 5. Uh, I think we actually don't need the gravity right now. Yeah, actually, we don't need that. When I enable it, uh, as you can see, uh, it's not doing much for us. All right, so came back down. Yeah, uh, I'm going to put down a pop drag because I want to slow it down. Let's say like 100. Yeah, that looks good. Uh huh. So we're generating random points based on uh, the points that we're already having in here. So uh, we're giving this input to our popnet, and our popnet is just uh, randomly selecting some of these points, uh, basically five of them each second. Uh, we can bring this up to like 10. We're going to have more, but uh, they're going to uh, pile up uh, especially in the beginning, so I, I prefer putting down five. And also, uh, in the constant activation, I'm gonna write dollar ff bigger than twenty four. So what's gonna happen here is that on the first twenty four frames, we're not gonna be having any uh, particles, and the reason is, uh, well, the first uh, frames everything is close to each other, and I also don't want any icicle forming uh, in the first second. Uh, I don't know if it makes sense. Uh, it's going to make sense uh, in a little bit. I'm going to come back to it. Uh, all right, so we'll just let this thing run. Good. I'm going to put down a trail stop. I'm going to come here, say, connect as polygons. And uh, let's type $FF and check. Why is it? Houdini's frozen. Oh yeah, I, I, I get it. 
uh, I forgot I should uh, put down pop in here so that we're not actually bringing everything and yeah it's fine uh, you need to uh, put down pop or actually the better way pop object one or pop object well, what's it called pop object yeah because uh, we don't want to bring the uh, static object out here so yeah this is good uh, we're trailing them these are going to be our icicles I'm just gonna put down a resample node in here and I'm gonna check care view it's always good to have the care view attribute uh, it's very useful so uh, care view is giving us uh, this attribute on each of these curves uh, starting from zero and ending in one and well uh, we're just gonna put down an attribute warp diamond side bind and bind export uh, just select both of them type care view or actually uh, I mean if you don't want to actually affect your care view you can just call this on a width something like that just connect them here put down a fit range maybe before putting down the fit range we can actually put down a ramp parameter as well change this to spline uh, we're going to come here, right click, go VEX options and create input parameters. All right, so when we come here, uh, up here we have some options. Now, what I wanted to do here is putting down a uh, polywire. Now, uh, I want to use this curve view, which, uh, well, it, it's now with, uh, I'm just going to type at sign with. And well, it, it looks terrible, I know that. First of all, let's change this to eight. Now we're gonna come here and on our uh, attribute warp, we are gonna change it like this. And now we're getting our icicle shapes. Cool, looks good. And we can uh, use this to manipulate uh, the shape. For example, maybe you wanna make some part smaller, some part bigger. Something like that. I'm not going to touch it. I just put it for uh, in case I need it. So, we need to be from polygons. 0 0.01. Yeah, looks good. And then we're just going to combine these two uh, branches together. So, let's put down VDB uh, combine. We'll come here, uh, change to STF union. Yeah, this looks good. Maybe put down a uh, smooth SDF before that in here uh, on our icicles. And this was the original shape. This is this one. And then just put down another uh, smooth SDF after that. Yeah. And if you don't like the shape, you can just simply change the speed if, if uh, it's too short. I don't know. Convert VDB again, convert it to polygons, and yeah, we have our shape. Looks pretty nice. I'm actually very happy with this. Uh, if you don't like it, again, you can just uh, manipulate your geometry, manipulate uh, this reshape node. If uh, these are sticking out too much, you can just go with like a value like three, and it's gonna get resolved. Uh, I mean, it's gonna make it bigger, but it's fine. Uh, let's come inside. Let's say let's put it between 7.5. So we're gonna get more movement. Also, maybe actually just go to 10 so that we have more icicles. All right. Yeah. This is an interesting look. I like it. So let's come here. We're gonna select these. Merge them together, and now we have our uh, geometry with this uh, IC effect. And you can put down a mountain node in here. Obviously, bring the height down. Play with this, so you get something interesting. Okay, right, something like this, and maybe colorize it so it's obvious which parts are. 
a frozen geometry oh yeah this is nice and uh, again you can just put whatever uh, geometry you want here and i think it's actually pretty fast as you can see i'm scrolling through the timeline and it's pretty much uh real time yeah it's awesome uh all, all right. right uh this is too thin so maybe 0 0.05 something like that again if if you not happy with this you can actually put down an attribute warp i'm just gonna come here copy this attribute that warp that i have here uh, let's dive inside one and here this noise is enough uh let's bring the scale to 0 0.0 no 0 0.1 it's it's not uh, not that interesting yet. Oh, three point five. Uh, frequency. Let's play with the frequency. Okay, yeah, we're getting somewhere. And now we're gonna just put down a fit range because again, as I said, uh, this value is between minus point five and point five, and now uh, we're not gonna be getting any artifacts on the inside, but uh, you should play with the scale to get something that you actually like. And yeah, uh, something like this. I'm still not really happy with this shape, so let's just play with it. Affect the amplitude, maybe. Okay, yeah, this is much nicer. Oh, I like this. It's actually really good. So again, whichever you prefer, uh, I kind of like both of them. Let's stick to the uh, attribute warp version. Now, in the end, you're just going to have to put down two groups. Let's just bring it down here. I'm going to call this one uh, Geo Group. Call this one Frozen group, frozen, frozen group. And I'm gonna put down a material node. I'm just gonna say frozen, and then geo. I'm gonna give it the material slash mat slash frozen and slash mat slash geo. All right, so. Uh, I still haven't uh, made the actual material or a smat builder. Let's call this one geo. And as you can see, when I apply it, they uh, they became uh, lighter the color. So I I know I'm uh, applying everything correctly and frozen. And yeah, we're good. Uh, basically, what I did there is uh, same with just generating this RS material copying it going here and just uh, paste it since i know this is going to be uh, the address i just type the name and then specify it later in the math section uh, i don't like going between contexts so much so i, I just generate everything in here and then uh, i'm done and i can focus on the materials all right uh this is good all right so we're near the end uh, i'm just gonna put down a camera Let's look at our uh, object from, I don't know, maybe somewhere from here. Yeah, this this, this looks nice. All right, uh, I'm gonna put down some lights. Our slide, the left side. Let's come here, our slide on the right side. Good, and we're gonna have a rim light. Okay, uh, let's jump back out, make it bigger, uh, select all of them, come to light and check visible, yeah, good, let's save the scene, go to camera, say render view, let's see what we have.
Oh right, yeah. Uh, looks good. Uh huh. Now we're gonna go to frozen. Uh, we can use the water uh, preset or okay tinted glass and come here change the tint to something like this okay yeah this looks good uh, also uh, let's just come here under redshift tessellation and check enable displacements so I, I like having displacement on my uh, ice material uh, displacement Connect the displacement in here save the scene uh, max on noise make the scale 0 0.01 look at the max on noise maybe FPM I love FPM such cool noise uh, disconnect it here Probably still need some manipulation. But yeah, we're getting there. I kind of like the shape now. Uh, let's just go to our geometry. Maybe change it to like iron or something like that. Oh, no, it doesn't look good. <laughs> yeah, let's just uh, create our own material. We can put down noises, stuff like that. Uh, down a color like this don't want any roughness all right good let's go back uh, let's look at our lights light number three right this is the rim light yeah okay yeah light number two Let's look at it from the side, something like that. Night number one. <clears throat> Sorry. All right, yeah, this is good. I like it. I mean, you can just uh, put down different stuff in here. Put down Material Blender. Copy this one. Connect it here. Maybe change the color, I don't know, like this. down accent noise again create something interesting I don't know I, mean, I, I feel like I've done this uh, technique so much over all videos that you guys probably know what's gonna happen here we're just gonna play with the values maybe something like this I don't know uh, Maybe bring the roughness down a little bit. All right, maybe add some color in here. Too much. Yeah, something like that. Looks good. Uh, let's go back to our frozen material. We can play with the roughness, make it rougher. Uh, I mean, obviously this is not a uh, icicle anymore. So be aware of that. Uh, it's pretty much like it goo or something like that but yeah you can just play with everything you can actually play with the color of your refraction generate something interesting there uh, maybe uh, play with subsurface add some scatter scale yeah something like that let's make this lighter and then just play with the absorption scale yeah that's the uh, basic process uh, you can put down a max on noise uh, let's go to electric let's look at it uh, something like this maybe and just connect it to the reflection roughness maybe it gets more interesting I don't know uh, it all depends on the scene that you're trying to generate here overall this is a good shape I'm kind of happy with it uh, we're not going to be focusing too much on the rendering part in this video and just move around 
this is too light. Uh, pick a frame that you like, maybe something like this, maybe zoomed in version. And again, as I said, the best part about this setup is that you can change your geometry to whatever you want and you can still get the results. It really doesn't depend on uh, your input. Maybe actually uh, add the tessellation here as well, just to make sure we're not getting any weird artifacts or anything like that. All right. Uh, maybe play with this material. Let's go with like copper. It was kind of interesting. Uh, what else? Let's just put down another material, RS material. Maybe keeping it simpler is actually better. It's a unified color. Uh, make it a little lighter. And yeah, that, that's pretty much it. And uh, you can also enable volumetrics. Let's do that. I love volumetrics. Uh, advanced volume scattering. Uh, let's come up here. Click on the RS light. Let's uh, bring the contribution scale up a little bit. This spread down uh, too much. Forgot to select the light, lock it. All right, can move it now. So, yeah, we, you can do uh, whatever you want. Very interesting shapes, very interesting designs. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. Uh, I am going to uh, show my uh, version of the setup next because I think that might also be interesting. Oh, by the way, let, let me actually put down a curvature. Uh, I kind of want to try that as well. Uh, convex 0 0.02. Yeah, this looks interesting. And uh, yeah, let's use that. As the mask, let's see how things look here. And yeah, uh, this is much more interesting. I kind of like it now. Uh, can play with our values. Come to our copper. Maybe change it a little bit. Just something like this. Oh yeah, this is very interesting. Oh, I like this. <laughs> and you can actually put down a bump map if you want. Connect this to the bump. And to this, to the input. Uh, and just put down, I don't know, minus one here if you want. You can also put down a displacement instead of a bump uh, if that works better for you. I don't know. Uh, displacement is going to change the curvature. So. You need to be careful about that. Uh, to put zero one. I shouldn't have connected it directly because now it's gonna get crazy. Uh, refresh the scene. Okay, as you can see, we're now adding some displacement. Uh, again, uh, it's uh, up to you, whichever you prefer. I'm kind of good with the bump. I think that's a good look. Uh, you can, again, come to your first material, put down like a uh, color layer, uh, connect this to the diffuse color. Well, black is actually kind of nice. <laughs> kind of like that. Maybe uh, I should just stick to black? Dark value? Yeah, this is actually quite interesting. <laughs> So yeah, let, let's uh, connect the color layer down, make some noise, connect it here uh, to the mask. Maybe change this to light value so that I can see what I'm doing here. Uh, booyah, maybe. Let's, let's take a look at our booyah noise. 
directly. It's going to be something like that. Make it bigger. Something like that. All right, yeah. Change the color to a whiter shade, such as this thing. And yeah, we're good to go. I'm happy with this. Pretty happy. Uh, the only thing I'm not happy with is the color of the light and the overall shape of the volumetric light. So let's make it smaller. I mean, uh, the volumetric light isn't actually necessary in this scene. Just kind of want to have something going on in here. Uh, why am I actually not getting any? Maybe, yeah, okay. Getting something. This spread. Play with this spread. Set it to something like this. All right, yeah. Uh, maybe add some octaves to your uh, booyah noise. And maybe add some color in here as well. It's more interesting. Maybe something like this actually kind of helps the uh, effect. And yeah, that's it. Okay, so. We're done here. I'm just gonna let this render. Uh, I'm still gonna play with the uh, final version uh, for the thumbnail. Uh, let me bring my own setup. Uh, I'm I'm just gonna uh, talk very quickly about what I did in my own version. Uh, yeah. Uh, let's take a look at the ballerina. Uh, we have a simple. Uh, rotating shape in here. It, it's not anything uh, fancy. Uh, we just have this thing. Uh, I just did the same technique uh, with the uh, frozen uh, effect that I just showed you guys. Uh, this is our effect, our icicles. Uh, they look really nice. I'm really happy with this. Uh, I, I just combine them together again and just add some colors. Very simple. Uh, we have our snow simulation, uh, which is just very simple particle simulation. Uh, I had to cache it because I have uh, collisions. And yeah, this is our very simple uh, particle simulation. I have a shouldn't have jumped inside. Uh, I have a pop axis force, pop wind, pop drag. Uh, all the normal stuff. I have some uh, collisions. Uh, I generated this, sh uh, this shape uh, right here. Kind of looks like a uh, snow thingy particle, snow shape, whatever you, you want to call it. Uh, it's so small, it doesn't really matter. Very simple. Uh, I just generated the basic shape and just used a copy transform. We have our dry ice, which is uh, literally the preset for uh, dry ice here. Where is it? Uh, dry ice. Uh, we have the glass, and I have a uh, attribute in here, which affects my uh, roughness. Uh, I, I just generated an attribute warp, use the noise. Uh, I called this attribute math roughness, and on my uh, material section on my glass, I just import that uh, as a particle attribute. Uh, what else? We have these lines in here, very simple. Uh, I'm just using a uh, using the uh, outside of the uh, glass. I just remesh it, uh, sort the points, put down a start starting points in here, uh, put down end points, and then just put down the find uh, shortest path. Very simple. Uh, use the start group and end group, uh, and then just uh, when I put down a carve note, just gonna grow, take over the whole thing. I fuse them together because uh, 
there's going to be uh, multiple points on top of each other. As you can see here, very messy. So when you uh, fuse them together, everything is resolved. And then just uh, define a P scale. And uh, by the way, the uh, find shortest path uh, by default puts down an attribute called cost, which kind of actually works like a resample node, but uh, it goes on the overall thing. So you can just put that, use that uh, to define your P scale. Now, very simple. Uh, what else do we have in here? We have our base, which is some very simple uh, hard surface modeling. You basically, put down a circle, uh, affect it, uh, blast uh, parts of it, extrude them, copy uh, stuff. Uh, it's very simple, very, very easy. So, yeah, that's the base. What else do we have here? We have the floor, just some object, some. Uh, boxes copied to some points and then just clipping them and stuff like that yeah uh, what else do we have in here we have the gears again very simple I just bring in circle uh, blast these parts uh, using the add uh, sub I just uh, bring the points uh, extract the points uh, scale them uh, with the uniform scale, merge them together, uh, another add uh, with the attribute ID, which I'm defining here, and setting this to equal to uh, ptnom, and then just sweeping them, uh, sweeping the inside, sweeping the outside, and then just merging everything together. We have our gear shape. Uh, I want this gear to go up and down, so I put down a motion, uh, a chop network, a motion effects. Uh, I used a wave. Let's take a look. Uh, this is my wave. This is my noise. And then I'm just uh, using them, combining them together, this math and multiplying them, and then just uh, exporting it out as this noise. Uh, and yeah, it just goes up and down very slowly. So uh, when I look at them all together, it's going to be like this. And I just uh, put down a transform with uh, the uh, keyframe, or you can just keyframe or put down a expression uh, minus frame here. So that it moves around and yeah, we're pretty much done. I just subdivide it, uh, copy it over in here, uh, creating another version of it. And by the way, I'm subdividing this one because I'm gonna use it as a collision uh, in my uh, snow simulation and then just uh, caching everything. You don't have to cache it, but uh, I wanted everything to be as fast as possible outside here, and uh, moving parts can make it slow, so yeah, that's why. Uh, check this cost, and yeah, that's the scene. Uh, very simple, very easy. Uh, it just takes some time to set up the materials and the lighting and stuff like that. Uh, let's take a look at this. Uh, yeah, it's done. Uh, I hope you like this tutorial. I try to uh, keep this one very short, very to, uh, to the point. Uh, I'm still going to play with these values. For example, uh, the roughness on the uh, frozen uh, object isn't quite right. We're having a lot of roughness on these parts and actually that's not uh, very correct. So let's, oh, I'm just gonna change that very quick and then we're gonna be done with this uh, tutorial. Uh, we shouldn't have too much white parts in here. That's basically uh, the thing. So in all honesty, maybe electric wasn't the best noise here. What about Booyah? Okay, let's stick to Booyah, but I'm gonna scale it in this direction to something, or actually maybe, this direct no this one maybe but uh yeah something like this maybe i don't know uh, let me uh check it uh if it's good i'm just gonna stick to this one and if i don't like it maybe change it the other direction yeah maybe this one's better i don't know and yeah, uh, that's it. We're done here. 
you can just continue working on it. You can change the material. Uh, if you don't like the colors, you can just play with them, change it to something that you enjoy, something that you like. Uh, if this thing, uh, the uh, copper material is too much, you can just uh, make this one bigger, the value, and just, uh, it's gonna affect the overall look. Maybe make it actually smaller, uh, not bigger. Something like this, 0 0.01. Yeah, that's kind of maybe more interesting. I don't know. Uh, again, everything depends on your taste. Uh, maybe something like this is much better, maybe cooler. I, I don't know. Why did I close that? So yeah, I'm just gonna uh, let this thing render one more time and we're gonna be done. All right, so uh, at the end, uh, I just changed a couple of uh, values here. For example, on the attribute warp, uh, I changed the frequency of the noise, the displacement values. I disabled this uh, smooth uh, STF here, uh, which is gonna give us uh, longer icicles. And uh, I just uh, came to my material, the frozen material, and bumped this uh, scatter scale to six which as you can see is giving us this nice value on top of the geometry. Like these parts are going to pretty much stay the same. But as I bump this up, you can see we're actually getting uh, something that looks like an ice. Uh, you can uh, cheat it in here and like uh, straight up put a uh, solid material, which by the way, kind of looks cool and uh, play with the values, play with the color, maybe something like this. I don't know, it's up to you. If you're happy with it, then it's okay. Uh, again, you can just add refraction, maybe a tiny bit of refraction, I don't know. Uh, I mean, this is pretty much cheating, but I mean, the results kind of look nice. And you can uh, add some scatter scale, in here, maybe some uh, absorption here, bring the refraction up a little bit. And yeah, you can uh, have something like this. Again, uh, I prefer approaching it in a more physically correct way, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, you can just, you know, uh, do whatever you want in here. As long as it looks good, then it's fine. Uh, I have just brought down the diffuse value uh, to zero to just play with this. Uh, maybe add some absorption. It's kind of interesting. I mean, uh, it doesn't look like ice, but it is interesting, you know? Or maybe uh, have something like this. And obviously the absorption scale should be way, way down. Uh, <laughs> I just realized I, I ended up with the exact same material that I had there. Uh, so in the end, I think uh, you're going to want to uh, use the same technique. All right. Uh, we're done here. Uh, I, I think it's a cool effect. Uh, it's actually going to be very helpful if you want to simulate uh, freezing stuff. Uh, you can just combine it with uh, like a particle simulation uh, and it's gonna look nice. So as a uh, kind of a, another example uh, for this project, I decided to bring Alfred, which is uh, one of 3D Scan's uh, awesome uh, models, which uh, you can just download from the website. Uh, I, I uh, changed the size. Uh, brought it to the uh, center and yeah, I, I uh, just I did the same thing with it there. Uh, I changed the input, just the same points, everything is the same. Uh, I played a little with the uh, points here, I, I added 50 and I played with these values a little bit because I wanted to get better results and 
For example, this is our icicles. Yeah. And we also have the uh, frozen part. I'm not the biggest fan of this shape in here. Let me take a look at my pyro spread. And yeah, uh, it's probably because of the diffusion or something like that. Yeah. Uh, I'm just going to delete this. Let me bring it over here. Play with the values a little bit. And yeah, this seems uh, better. So let's just play the simulation. Okay, and why am I not getting anything? Oh, I'm, I'm frame one. Uh, good. Okay, yeah, we're getting. Our icicles. Yeah, this looks pretty good. Now, as you can see, uh, we can just get very different results uh, just changing the geometry, changing the shape. Uh, I added this smooth node in here, smoothing things a little bit. Then uh, I put down the warp, attribute warp, I uh, subdivide it to get better results. Uh, you can just leave it at uh, this original subdivision is fine. Uh, I just decided to subdivide it a little bit as well. And yeah, that's it. Again, another example. Uh, it's going to end up looking something like this. Uh, you can also uh, tweak some stuff in your material. Uh, let me show you. For example, well, not doing anything there. Uh, you can just add a bump map and it's gonna help with the setup. Let me bring it over. Uh, we're adding these tiny parts in here. And yeah, the, as you can see, uh, very simple, very effective. Uh, it, it's a nice effect. Uh, you can just uh, use it whenever you need uh, any sort of uh, freezing effect or something like that. I also changed a couple of parameters on my subsurface. For example, I brought the scatter scale way up to uh, 5 because I think uh, it's giving us better results. Uh, I played with phase. Uh, I changed the, uh, where is it? The IOR, for example. Uh, if you leave the IOR at the default value, you're not going to see this top part. Uh, light is not going to be broken enough so I just uh, brought this value up and as you can see it looks better and yeah that that's it uh, I promise this is the final time I say <laughs> that's it uh, I'm just gonna uh, show you how this thing looks uh, you can just change your values you can change uh, the geometry you can bring whatever you want just resim this and yeah that's it. Thank you. Bye-bye.